we're going to determine from this graph uh, open intervals where the function is concave up and concave down. Now a function is concave up and decreasing if it has a shape that looks something like this, and a function is concave up and increasing if it has a shape something like that. A function is then concave down and increasing if its shape looks something like this, and it's concave down and decreasing if its shape looks something like that. So let's go to this graph now and first identify where on this graph uh, the function is concave up and down. So I'm just going to draw lines here. Our function is concave up here and all the way up to somewhere around there. Then the function changes to concave down and continues to be concave down all the way up to that point where uh, it's no longer differentiable. Then if we continue along the function, it continues to be concave down until I would say right about this point right here. Then it looks to me like the function is concave up again all the way until we get to say x equals eight over here. So now let's write out the intervals where this function is concave up. Whenever we try to locate anything on a function, we're giving x values. We're focusing on these x values here. So our function is gonna be concave up from x equals zero to x equals two and those will be open intervals. And then it looks like our function is concave up again between x equals five and eight. If we could project that this function would continue on uh, to infinity, then maybe this interval would go to infinity. And same in this direction. If we could project that this function just looked exactly the same all the way to negative infinity, then we might have a negative infinity here as well. But typically, if that was the case, we would have little arrows at the end of our function. So I think these are going to be the correct intervals. Now, where is the function concave down? Well, we're talking about x values again. Our function is concave down from 2 to 4. And then right here at this cusp, this function does not have a derivative or a second derivative. So we're just going to say 2 to 4. And then we pick back up here just to the right of x equals 4 and the function is concave down until x equals 5. Now as far as inflection points are concerned, those occur right at the boundary where a function changes from concave up to concave down and vice versa. So assuming that the inflection points happen at nice points, I would say that our inflection point is most likely right here at the point 2, 2, where the function changes from concave up to concave down. And then another inflection point would occur right here at 5, 2, where the function changes from concave down to concave up. Now, these are just points that we're talking about, so we're not using interval notation here. We just have two points, and we're going to separate those by commas. Okay, I think that does it.